are the Ten Commandments of Financial Prosperity, the Ten Commandments of Money. The Ten Commandments says, Thou shalt learn to keep a portion. Thou shalt learn to keep a portion. Now, this commandment implies that for one to become rich and wealthy, he must develop the art of saving. He must develop the art of saving. Many people make money just to spend it and then nothing is left. One major difference between the rich and the poor is that the rich save what they make and then spend what is left. While the poor spend all they make, they earn, and there's nothing else to save. Praise the Lord. According to the book, The Richest Man in Babylon by George S. Classen, he says it is oppression, pay yourself first. Oppression, pay yourself first. Meaning, every time money enters your money, pay yourself. It's your money, but keep your portion and say, this one is for me. You keep it and not use it. The remaining is yours. But that one you just keep it safe is in reserve the money for me. You can pay yourself first. Tell your neighbor, pay yourself first. <laughs> Hallelujah. For whatever income, no matter how small, just keep a tent. According to that, uh, that book, he said, pay yourself a tent. A tent for yourself, and before long, you will have something to show for it. It is important to say here that we are not talking about Christmas savings, saving to spend, and that's what Robert Kiyosaki calls the rat race. Everybody listen. That the book says, pay yourself a tent, which is what where they get the word tight. He says, pay yourself tight in this uh, present usage. But that does not mean that you should be paying yourself tight, because it's just a guide on how to teach you how to save. You can give 10%, you can give 5%, you can give 20%, but at least keep something. Tell your neighbor, keep something. A Christian is not guided by law, okay? That is why Christians don't pay tight, for tight is law. Christianity is grace. Anything law is not Christianity. So this is just to show you how to try to be doing something. Not that you must, you must be putting you on death. It's not a must. Okay? Anything law is not Christianity. Christianity operates by grace. Now, many don't save at all. And those who do save only do so for Christmas. And after Christmas, they are back to square one. Because if I say how many of us save money, many hands will go up. But all, many of us only save for Christmas. Christmas save. And after Christmas, we return back to square one. So saving is not saving to spend, but saving to invest. Praise God. Do you understand? Ask whatever, do you save to spend or do you save to invest? Do you save to spend or save? Hallelujah. Commandment number four. It says, Thou shalt learn to make money work for you. That is what we just really say. Saving to invest. Thou shalt learn how to make money work for you. Now, in financial balance, it is said that the poor work for money while money works for the rich. So the big question here is, are you working for money? Or is money working for you? If you are working for money, no matter how much your salary is, no matter your position in the office, you are rated among the poor, financial ones. As long as you are working for money, your salary size notwithstanding. As long as money is not working for you, if you like be the president, director, governor, you are just among the poor. That is in financial palace, this is differences whether money is working for you or whether you're working for money. That is why the governor is working for money. Because why he is being paid is because he goes to work. But every governor has a best we are is not dead, but money is multiplying. That's what makes the governor a rich person, not because he's a governor. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask as ever, do you understand? Alright. 
What kind of income do you get? What kind of income do you have? Let me ask yourself, what type of income do you have? Do you get? There are three kinds of income, what I call the income triangle. Hello? The income triangle. That is paycheck income, portfolio income, and passive income. PPP, the three P's of income. Either is a paycheck, is a portfolio, or is a passive one. What is a paycheck? Whereby you are being given a check, you are paid, you are given an envelope at the end of every month. Meaning, once you go to work, job security, like very civil servants, public servants, that is the first rung in the ladder of you know, uh, income. That is the first stage. You go to work, they pay you. You just receive a check, a paycheck income. Then there is the portfolio income. This is money that comes, income that comes through things like shares. I owe you. Uh, what do they call uh, Mutual funds. ETC. These are money that come, even though you may not be directly involved. Treasury bill. Stocks. Debentures. All those things, money comes to you from such things. Why passive income? Passive means not active. Passive is the opposite of active. So you are not actively involved. But money still comes. Things like real estate. For instance, this is a piece of land. You buy it. There's nothing else you do except to buy it. But the value keeps on improving. Even though you didn't work on it, you didn't cultivate on it, you didn't build on it, but every year, the money keeps adding. The money keeps adding. That is passive income. Your money is increasing. You, may, you are busy doing other things. You are not involved directly or actively. Yet, the money is increased, increasing. The fifth commandment says, Thou shalt, have, thou shalt control thy expenditures. We are all victims here. Someone shout fire. fire. Someone shout fire. fire. Jump up, jump up, jump up, jump up and shout fire. 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 Everybody jump up, jump up and shout fire. 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 Thou shalt control your expenditures. This is the fifth commandment. Mankind is born with desires and appetites. Yet, self-control is a great virtue, as no one should expect to conquer the world who has not conquered first himself. Ability to budget is a great plus in financial prosperity. Ability to budget is a great plus in financial prosperity. No matter how much you get, there will always, there will always be desires awaiting gratification. In fact, the more you get, the greater the desires. It's not left for you to employ the force of discipline and accountability in order to maintain your focus financial wise. Control your spending by leaving some things spending. Or are you doing stomach banking, stomach construction? Control your spending by leaving some things pending. Praise the Lord. Last year, in the month of May, I calculated the expenses I have done from January to May and it ran into a million naira. About a million naira. I sat down and began to calculate again. You mean that I expect to work with not naira? If I got my eyes, I said, look, look at what. If not that I was writing them down, I wouldn't have believed that I spent that amount from January to May, that I spent about one million, I've done a piece of about one million, it gave me some money. So I started going through, what did I use this money for? I started going through again, I was the one who wrote down the expenses. It was a surprise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So thou shalt control thy expenses. This is not easy, but we have to try. Let me tell you, never try, try, try. try. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Say, I will try. I will. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord. Help, me. help me. Do self-control. Self 
to lift some things, my people. To lift some things. Try, tell several people. Try, tell several people. Try, 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 try. Go, 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 go. Try, tell several people. Try, 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 try. Try to control your expenditure. Try to control your expenditure. Hallelujah. All right. The sixth commandment. The sixth commandment. Praise the Lord. Do you know, sit down. Do you know that if you sit down and calculate how much money that have entered your hands in the last 10 years, you are saying you will not believe it. If there is any record to show you how much money that have entered your hand as you are old and then used in the last 10 years, you will not believe it. But to, to millions, you say me, it's not me. You will not believe it. And do you know, just do calculations, let's assume you are saving 10, 10 naira every day. And you are 40 years. 10 naira times 365 days is how much? That is for one year. 3,650 naira times 40. And see how much it will be. Just 10 naira. The power of saving. Praise God. That is why in the short term it may seem nothing. But in the long term, it is something. It is something. Anytime you come to our house, we look for malt for you. We look for minerals for you. But those people we, we call rich men go to their house, they need to chill the glass water. Chill glass water. But anytime they come to your house, you will not get that skater. Juice, wine. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Alright, sixth commandment. Thou shalt have, thou shalt not have wrong opinion about money. Thou shalt not have wrong opinion about money. We said it in the beginning. Why? Because perception affects reception. If you want to be rich, you must not have a wrong opinion concerning money and the wealth. Some wrong opinions that people have about money are money is the root of all evil. Money is the devil's tool. Evil what? Jesus Christ was poor. Poverty is a virtue. The Bible says blessed are the poor. The Bible did not say blessed are the poor. He said, poor in spirit. There's a difference. The rich will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible did not say so, but he said, how difficult it is for the rich to inherit. And that's why many of us enter the kingdom as a poor people. But having entered the kingdom, we're supposed to become rich in the kingdom. That is it. The poor is to enter the kingdom, but not to remain poor. God determines my financial prosperity. These are wrong opinions people have. So I don't want to stop. What will be will be. If God wants me to succeed, I will succeed. God wants you to succeed. You are created in His own image and He takes pleasure in your prosperity. So God wants you to prosper. Tell your neighbor, God wants you to prosper. God wants you to prosper. So cross check what you believe about money and see where there is need for an opinion change. You know, there are people who believe that every rich man is an occult man. Don't mind these occult people. Why we know that there are many occult people? It doesn't mean that everybody who is rich is an occult person. There is genuine rich, richness. God loves it, Jesus became poor. Why? Why did Jesus become poor? So that we become rich. So there is genuine richness. Being rich, that is the will of God. Seventh commandment, thou shalt not live above thy, yeah, thou shalt not live above your means. This has to do with wisdom. Pride liquidates a man as fast as possible. Life is in stages and phases. Try to discover your level as at present. Your present should not intimidate your future. Acknowledging your present level does not mean you are not going somewhere, but at present, 
This is what I can afford. Don't judge me who can afford A to buy A. Where what you can afford for now is B. That is the point we are making. Try to discover your present level and what you can afford at the present. Where you live now will not determine where you will live tomorrow. I met someone who is not doing anything tangible, but she was keeping a flat. Yet she was single. She kept believing and begging to be able to parent. Believing and begging. Believing, I believe God. She will help me. She will help me. Believing and begging. That has to do with desires and greed. Praise the Lord. Anybody that lives above his means will soon miss his abode. The adage, go to your coat according to your clothes, is still relevant today. Go to your coat according to your clothes. Make do with what you have. The Bible says, do not despise your days of little beginning. That I'm living in one room today does not mean I will not live in a flat tomorrow. That I live downstairs today does not mean that I will not build upstairs tomorrow. But since I am at present, living in one room, I should enjoy it and not begin to die because of my neighbor who is living upstairs. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are looking at the commandments of financial prosperity. The seventh one says, you shall not live above your means. So how much money? Many of us, financial interests, many of us are not even aware how much is coming into our hands every month. I was telling my wife, I said, it's like, the, the money that entered my hand the last year is less than what entered my hand the last two years. I'm supposed to be progressive. But what I enter, say, I'm married. So you are keeping record. I say, yes. Every money that enters my hand, I record it. For every month, I know how much I get. And I know what expenses I do. Most times, my expenses will be more than the income. And you know what that means? Deficits. Deficits. So the seventh commandment is, you will not live above your means. But if you are not keeping record, you may not even know what you have means. What is your means? What you have to edit for now? If you are not keeping record. That's why record keeping is part of financial interest. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. Every year, I know the average of what enters my hand. What I mean by average is when I divide the whole income by 12. So I know what, what my average earning is going to be. Praise the Lord. All right. The eighth commandment it says, Thou shalt not think negatively. Negative thinking. Thou shalt not think negatively. It is not right that we are thinking neg negatively. And therefore, thoughts have presence. Thoughts control words. What is a thought? A thought simply means a silent word. What is a word? A word simply means an expressed thought. Therefore, your thoughts control your words. Your thoughts control your words. The Bible says, as a man thinks, that is how it is. So if you think that poverty is your birthright, how can you forge ahead? If you think that all these people are thieves, how can you acquire wealth? Think B and you will live B. Many people think that because of their humble beginning or their background that they cannot get rich. That's why it is said, don't let your background keep your back to the ground. Others think that it takes money to create money. And since they don't have enough capital, they cannot forge ahead even though they live in the nation's capital. They fail to realize that even the federal capital is not visible, but in the mind or the vision of the designers, it only manifests physically in the city called federal capital territory. Why? The greatest capital is your head. And if you have a head, you must move ahead. Some of us are here. You. Anywhere. It first existed in the mind 
or the vision of those who designed it, and therefore their mind it began to be implemented into what we now see as the federal capital territory, meaning the judgment starts from the vision. Don't think negatively. Tell your neighbor, don't think negatively. Don't think negatively. Push my heart, push my heart. Say, don't think negatively. Don't think negatively. Ninth commandment. Thou shalt not speak negatively. This is just corollary with the first, the, the eighth one. We don't think negatively and we don't speak negatively. Now, Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. Say unto them, as I live, Yahweh declares, I shall do to you what I hear you say. Your words, there's a miracle in your mouth. Your words shape your mouth. So what I hear you say, that is what I will do to you. Numbers chapter 14, verse 18. So the words you speak affect your productivity in life. Words, just like thoughts, shape destinies. The people of Israel, though they were eyewitnesses to the miracles God worked both in Egypt and at the desert, they still confessed negative. Even though God promised them by himself that they will give them the land flowing with milk and honey, yet they said we are not able to possess it. And that happened. All the adults among them, they had to die in the desert. Except Joshua and Caleb, that the Bible recorded, they had a different spirit through their positive confession. So, don't emphasize the negative. Instead, prophesy what? The positive. Even though the Bible encourages the weak to say, I am strong. That is Joel chapter 3 verse 9. Let the weak say, I am strong. That is that which is just a principle. Meaning, don't confess what you see. Confess what you believe or what you ex expect. How do you determine? How you speak determines your opinion. And what